welcome. How are you doing tonight? It is Friday, which means that it is our sip and so. Yay! <laughs> and I just, are we still on the slide or is it me? Okay. <laughs> Rogue is photo bombing here in the background. I forgot to put vodka in my tea, so it's, we're just going to have regular tea. <laughs> it's a hot day today in the Pacific Northwest, so I thought I would do this out on the deck with my iced tea and we have a very, very, very special show tonight. I wanna thank everybody who sent stories in uh, about their first quilts. Um, they sent pictures of their first quilts. I was so impressed with everybody's work. So let me go ahead and grab my feeds here and we will get the show on the road. Did everybody have a good week this week? <clears throat> I, uh, with Monday being a holiday, a oh, rogue, <laughs> he's going to say, rogue, don't be silly. <laughs> uh, we, I felt like I had a four day work week. It was pretty crazy. Oh, there we are. Yay. Okay. So let me, I got Facebook up. Let me go grab friends over on YouTube and then we will get rolling. You know what I started realizing after I put the request out for people to send pictures of their first quilts? Much like with me, we didn't, this, in this season, we have our phones in our hands, attached to our hands, almost like cyborg to our hands, and that we all have cameras on us at all times. But some of us who have been quilting for 20, 25, 30 years, we didn't have like cameras attached to our hands back then. And so, you know, having a picture of that first quilt might be, might be difficult. So let me say hi to a couple friends and then let's get, let's get to showing some quilts. We got over 20 um, pictures to go through. So hope you guys are excited. Grab your beverage of choice and pull up your laptop and let's have some fun. So I've got Kim Warren over on YouTube. Hi, thanks for joining us. Polly's on, Missy's on in beautiful Redmond. Hello, Missy. Leanna's on in Georgia. Thanks for joining us tonight. Sandy Martin's on. Hi, Sandy Sandy. She says, looking forward to seeing everybody's quilts. Me too. All right, let's see here. Angel's on from Houston. Michelle's on from Oklahoma. Hi, hi, hi. Linda's on from Tennessee. Susan Woods Long is on from Arlington, Washington. Hello. Nancy Finkel, or Finkel Day, Day, Finkel Day, sorry Nancy if I said that wrong, is in Lake Stevens. Franny's on from Kansas. Mel and Joe are on from Mississippi Gulf Coast. Hi guys. Um, Mel, we need to talk over the weekend because I we need to coordinate our schedules. Um, so I'm probably going to text you tomorrow so we can have a conversation. Uh, Margaret Cox is on uh, traveling on her RV, Rock Springs, Wyoming right now. She says it's windy. Be careful, sister. Be careful. Melanie Ganson is on from Duval. Hi. I think, Melanie, you put an order in this week and I saw Duval and I was like, oh, my twin sister lives in Duval. You're just over on the other hill. I'm in Redmond. Hi, Nancy. Thanks for joining us in Durango, Colorado on her way home to, to Phoenix. Becky's on tonight in Texas. Rhonda Daniel's on. It is a relaxing spot. I'm wondering if we're going to get visited by a hummingbird because I was showing everybody on Instagram. I have a citronella plant right here and they love the blossoms. So won't that be cool if a little hummingbird comes over? I wouldn't mind. Lisa's, how are you in Connecticut? Thanks for joining us. Long time no see. Glad you're able to make it on. Uh, Sheila Wise on on YouTube from hot Northern California. Um, let's see, Judy S. is on from Kansas, Linda Wood's on from Texas, Cindy, or I'm sorry, Debbie um, is on from Kentucky, hi Debbie, uh, Sharon's on from Iowa, Jeanette is on, hello from Sammamish, Bonnie's on from Illinois, Kathy's on from Illinois, <laughs> everybody's excited about the week, Therese is on from Knoxville, hello, it was you Melanie, I thought so. Well, if you want to meet me over the weekend, there's no point in me shipping from Redmond to Duval. I'll call you when we get off the show. We'll talk. Hi, Jen Jen. And George is on from Maryland. Hello, hello. And Sue Marshall is on from New York. Okay, friends. I have plain iced tea tonight. 
I have not had enough water tonight. Today, ah, Dorinda's on. Hi, 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 sweetheart. And so that's not, that's not a good combination. Alcohol and not enough water for me. <laughs> Hello, Epic Shard. Oh, Angela. <laughs> hi, Angela from, from Edmond, Oklahoma. <laughs> Sandy Martin is in Pleasanton. She says it's 102 in her neck of the woods. Oh, Franny's on her staycation. Nice. And Bridget in Rimrock says, Hailstorm, might have to log out. Girl, take cover. Take cover. All right, are you guys ready to see some quilts? I thought I would kick this off with my first quilt, as ugly as it is. <laughs> Hi, Carrie Bach. Thanks for joining us over on YouTube. So I want everybody to prepare themselves for a moment. So my first quilt was made in 1996. Um, I was 20 years old. I may have been 21 years old um, because I got married at 20 and this all came about in my first year of marriage. And I was definitely into country cats. <laughs> what, the, what the heck? Um, my darling mother-in-law had given me some basic supplies and had given me an old Kenmore to start sewing on. Oh, hi, Lisa. She says it's only 111 in, uh, in Phoenix. Balmy. Balmy. And so anyway, I'm going to apologize about this quilt because it's... I actually brought one of my prettier ones to show you that was made a few years later um, on my home sewing machine on a Bernina. But um, let's start with the with the first quilt since that's what this show is all about. Hi, Janice in Indiana. Thanks for joining us. So first of all, the the back is going to give you some preview. <laughs> Look at this yarn and kittens on it. What was I thinking? Okay, so. <clears throat> See if I can show enough of this. So you'll you'll see this is I move my tea so I don't spill it. This is a strip pieced quilt. You guys see the oop, sorry, the kitties are on the side. So do you see the interlocking kitties? We have the dark kitty and the light kitty. I thought it was just, you know, <laughs> it was just uh the most cute thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Hi, Susan from Ohio. She's watching with her 221 Dorothy. Hello, Dorothy, the sewing machine. So I just want to point out a couple of oh, the stinks. I need to wash this. So I want to point out a couple of things. Uh, per, for me, precision in quilting didn't come until many years down the road. I could have cared less if my seams lined up. I just didn't want any visible holes. I had no idea about pressing. That was, these were all techniques that I learned way down the road. And the sewing machine, like case in point, I don't know if you guys can see this. Do you guys see that scene? So I've got really big long stitches and baby stitches. I had no idea that I wasn't supposed to push and pull the quilt through the neck of the machine and I kept snapping, uh, snapping needles left and right. And finally I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't force the thread or the, the uh, fabric through the machine. I did hand bind this one. I had now machine bind and I even had a, look, I even had a um, curtain rod or a, like a hanger sewn into it. Good stuff, you guys, good stuff. All right, that's, that is quilt number one. So this quilt was several years later after I actually had some instruction and I was gonna make this into a class, but I decided it was kind of difficult and that the, thanks babe, that the, uh, the, um, the pool of people that would be interested in trying to make something like this might be small, so I never wrote the pattern. But I made this on my home sewing machine. I was really into feathers at the time. So this was just from a few years later. Isn't that pretty? I know, it's pretty, I love this one. It just rides around in my, my teaching kits, you know, for when I used to actually be able to teach in-person classes. They're just starting back up again, by the way, so excited. <laughs> Missy says, meow. <laughs> oh, Rhonda Daniels remembers the kitty fabric. <laughs> Hi, Ellie Campbell in Texas, thanks for joining us. So those are my little show and tells. Oh no, Jen Jen couldn't, I tried many times to post my quilt and kept telling me email not valid. 
Oh no. Um, Jen, Jen, if you send me, if you can get it to go through, it's info, I-N-F-O, at featherweightdoctor.com. I'll post it on my story over the weekend so everybody can still see it. Who couldn't get their quilt in? Huh? Who couldn't get their quilt in? Uh, Jen, Jen couldn't get, no, uh, the email kept saying, oh, we have your quilt. Jen, Jen? Jen Siggers? Yeah. Jen, we got it. You're in the show. <laughs> yes, Pauline, I know that's too difficult for a new quilter. That's why the class never took off. <laughs> oh, Denise's on. Hi, Denise. Hello, evil twin sister Denise. Okay. Oop, hold on. I just lost my feed. Sorry, guys. Shoot. Sorry, sorry. Hang on one sec. I lost my technology glitch. Technology glitch. Okay. Let's see, what did I miss? Okay, so Jen Jen, your quilt is on here. Oh, hi Elizabeth in Indiana, hello, hello. All right, let's go on to our first person. So Angel, actually some of you guys sent me stories with the quilt, so I thought I would read that when we go to throw the, the quilt up picture. So Ray, go ahead and throw the picture on. I'm gonna read Angel, our super fan from Houston's um, letter here. She says, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's first quilt during our upcoming show. Here is my first quilt. It is a blanket style, I guess you would call it. This was my second attempt at quilting. I took on a big project, but I knew it would be worth it when I finished. For years, my daddy tried to get me to take sewing lessons. I was opposed because I remembered my mom sewing when I was younger and she didn't like it at all. So there was always an issue with the machine or something. I don't remember all the details. My daddy tried several times to talk me into it. He said I was crafty and really thought I would like it. Well, as my dad aged, he passed at 90 a few years ago. That's sad. He continued to remind me that we needed to make a quilt of his clothing. I did make one of my mom's clothes after she passed. My dad helped me pick out, pick out some of the clothes he thought I would should use and box them up for keep safing, keep safekeeping as he called it. Uh, about after a year after he passed, I decided to have a quilt made. I checked around, found a place, but they didn't send your back your scraps. I wanted my scraps, and even though I didn't, so I wasn't sure what I would do with them, but I wanted them. So I found a local place that teaches lessons. I took one lesson, watched tons of YouTube videos, and then took a class on t-shirt quilts. Oh, and I bought a Janome DC 2019 from my local sewing shop because the lady there said she thought it was a good fit for me. I took two classes and made a quilt. I was thrilled. The back is minky. In the middle is a photo blanket with pic photos from our annual adventure trips we would take during the summer and Christmas break. Aww. And it says, now I have seven machines total. One is my mom's, three are featherweights, including my new 222. Very, very, very cool, Angel. <laughs> Let me see that quilt. Oh, uh, I can't believe you quilted Minky on that Janome. Girl, you are fearless. Minky on a home sewing machine, I say no thank you to. <laughs> so yay, way to go, Angel. We love it. Very, very, very fun. I like your patch worky top and your photo photo background very neat all right next we have let's see here <laughs> uh dorina so dorina kind of made my day just so you know i don't think i have a an explanation for dorina's did i did i oh shoot i do have an explanation for hers let me read it um okay so is the quilt up? Okay, so this is Dorina's. Dorina says, my first quilt for my doll made with the help of my grandpa, who was a quilter. I was seven years old. He also taught me how to embroider. That's awesome. Very, very, very cool. How special is that? So Dorina made herself a little famous with me during one of our sew-alongs where she finished her quilt before I did. <laughs> which is totally fun. Totally fun. All right. Way to go, Dorina. Love it. She's a local gal. I think she lives in Woodenville or Bellevue around here. How fun is that? All right. Miss Franny Baldwin is next. Okay. Good Lord. This is the big, big letter. So everybody buckle up for a second. Let's see here. Um, 
Uh, okay, so um, I think some of this is we're going to talk about next week because um, she is going to be, Franny's joining me on our featherweight stories next week. So she's actually going to get on camera with me. But she sent this picture and said, as of today, my first ever quilt is on my bed. That's cool. You kept it for yourself. A lot of people make things for other people. That's kind of what get, gets them into quilting. Um, she says, I'm currently cutting out pieces for two grandkid quilts and will be using both of my featherweights to make the rest of my grandkids quilts. Uh, my Carol, that's her featherweight, is at the shop. So is my BFF and I, we, and I can spend time together. I have finished quilts for her uh, that she oh, that she couldn't do anymore because of her eyesight. She feels my heart. I'm so blessed in this life, even when I don't know it. So how pretty is that? That is a, that quilt took a lot of time, Franny. I mean, the embroidery alone is, is crazy. So uh, Franny's gonna be talking about her journey to find her Carol, um, Carol, uh, mm, 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 Carol Featherweight, sorry. Uh, we're gonna be talking about it next week. <laughs> so, that's so fun. Oh, thank you. All right, so let's see. Nancy wants to, did, Reagan, did you, oh, did you put your first quilt on the show? What was your first quilt? I can't remember. Well, that was the first one you helped me with, the popsicle quilt. I didn't pull Reagan's first. It technically was a quilt block. I didn't pull that out. I should have. Dang it. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys. All right. So next, we're going to talk about George Hubble from Maryland. So George is a lady. <laughs> Yeah, George has been following um, my shows for, oh, I don't know, a few a few months. And um, she had joined one of my virtual classes. Um, and then something came up with her grandsons, and so she couldn't do it. So I ended up having to call her. And there was a man that answered the phone. And I said, thank goodness I didn't say, is this George? <laughs> but I said, is George there? And then this very sweet lady got on the phone and we laughed. Um, George told me of how she was named. She was named after her grandmother who was also was named George. It's not short for Georgia. It's not short for something else. Her name is George. And um, I thought it was really sweet because she said her grandma had a wonderful sense of humor. And, and I thought, well, you, if you're, if you're a grandma to George Hubble, then you were probably, you know, 20s, 30s baby. And so you would have had to have a good sense of humor to be named George in that day and age. <laughs> That's fun. You guys are talking on the chat about how some of you have made that, that those same quilts. Oh, grandma says it's the one that you made while camping. What, what quilt was that? <clears throat> I think it was a turning 20 or a yellow brick road. Anyway. All right, so we have a beautiful, so George sent us a beautiful, um, man, this looks hand quilted. Um, and she says, my first quilt, using scraps from garment sewing I did for my girls and myself. I figured if it worked with fabrics, not necessarily supposed to be in quilting, then it worked. <laughs> then I will work on, with the appropriate fabrics. Hand pieced and hand quilted, George. Hand is a four letter word in my household. Hand pieced and hand quilted. I know how you feel about that word, she says. <laughs> she said, but I was a passenger in the car traveling between house and hospital. Very fun. Yes, I, you, yes you do know how I feel about that word. <laughs> Hi, Odie. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Jeanette, oh, you guys. Jeanette, this is your quilt. Um, she has a puppy on hers, on her first quilt. She called it her um, concert quilt. So I think there's a winery around here. <laughs> Odie says, I bow to all of those that hand quilt. There's a winery around here that does um, open air concerts. And I 
think this is what Jeanette meant when she said that it was her concert quilt is for probably going to Sacho St. Michelle um, and, you know, sitting on the lawn. I, Jeanette, are you still watching? What's the name of your puppy? That looks like some kind of a doodle, golden doodle or labradoodle. I love the green. I know that's going to be shock everybody to no end that Darlene likes the green. <laughs> oh, Franny says hers was hand sewn and it took me seven months. She said she'll never do it again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would think <clears throat> hand sewn. I would never do that again either. Okay. Jen Jen, here's yours. <clears throat> Apparently we did it. We did it. We did get your quilt. This looks like, what's that pattern called? Is it called trip around the world? It kind of looks like a trip around the world to me. Um, so Jen Jen says, technically this is not exactly my first quilt because my very first quilt is currently under renovation in a move and it got some stains on it and now stored improperly in the middle section faded. Oh no. The bad thing is it's not dated. I hate the, I hate that none of my first 10 or so were dated. Were not dated, I'm sorry, but now I make sure to keep a record. So Jen Jen, I am terrible at dating things also. The only reason why I know when my first quilt was is because it coincides with my wedding. That's the only reason why I know. Because I was not in good practice on ta on labeling things. Um, if it was like a piece for a baby or a something where, like a college graduation that I made for someone, I really made sure to put a label and say who it was from and what year it was made. Because I hope that that person will find value in, you know, in that down the road. But, um... But I wasn't good about it at first either. And again, because we don't, we didn't have camera phones, you know, in our hand at all times, there's no stamp or date stamp or anything like that either. So um, <clears throat> I'm sure we're all much better about making things, sure things are documented now. All right. So Miss Julia Gregory Port Portier, I think is how you say her whole name. Um, she is from Texas. Thanks for sending in your picture, Julia. There's a baby on this one. What'd you say? This one has the baby. Uh, this is what you sent me. No, this is what you sent me. Oh, it's the same quilt. Okay, that's fine. What's the name of those colored pieces? I'm not sure which colored pieces. I'm horrible, <laughs> Sandy says, I'm horrible about labeling too. Need to make more of an effort. You do. Because these things are things that will hold up over time and we want them to be remembered and honored you know in a hundred years from now i i mean i'm sure much like you guys i spend money on good <clears throat> solid cotton quilts and call it cotton batting and cotton thread and because uh, i want it to last for a long time so yeah we need to be better about labeling things all of us as a group we need to commit to it all right so it says so julia says hey darlene um go ahead and throw up julia's uh, my very first quilt was made for my grandson when he was born. I had no guidance and lots of overconfidence. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I've been sewing so long, how hard could a quilt be, she said. Well, I spent a lot of time trying to find a pattern and settled on a free nine patch called Baseball. It used only scraps except for the white fabric that I bought for contrast. I don't think one corner matched and now I'm kind of embarrassed. Stop. <laughs> but I likely, but I, I liked the, what, wait, W-Z-Y. It came out even though it wasn't perfect. The grandson's now 14. Look at how handsome he is. Look at how handsome he is is now 14 years old and I'm working on my second quilt. After joining Stephanie's Fat Quarter Club, I love her, stashing with Stephanie. I am doing the floating lanterns. Hopefully it turns out better than the first. Julia, that's awesome. I love that. Look at how handsome that buddy is. 14, 14 now. <laughs> Carrie says I'm not good at labeling my quilts either, mostly because I'm on to the next one. It's true. 
it's true. Hi, Jennifer down Reno. Thanks for joining us tonight. Jen says, Jen Jen says, think about the dear Jane. You will not catch me doing that quilt. No way, Jose. Uh-oh. Excuse me. <laughs> oh no, Grandma just sent you a quilt. Okay, so I have Kathy Klein from Illinois. She says, my first quilt was an Irish chain made in 1999 for my granddaughter, who was age seven then. Oh, look at how sweet the little hearts are. So cute. Did you show Kathy Klein's picture? No, I didn't. Oh, we'll show Kathy Klein's picture. Is it coming? <laughs> Everybody says, bless you. <laughs> oh, thanks, guys. It's because I'm sitting outside. Something's blooming. There's Kathy Klein. Okay, good. Cool, cool, cool. So this is Kathy's iris chain. I love that. Love, love, love that. I have all of Reagan's baby quilts. I kept them all. People who made quilts for me. Um... I made for her. I kept all the kids' quilts, actually. Um, we'll give them to them someday. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> all right. So, Kathy Zoka. So, there's some sisters that watch this program regularly. Started with Fran. Franny's the, who's joining me next week on Wednesday. Fran um, got her sister... Kathy, who lives in Addie, Washington, which is close to Colville, um, to, to join the program. She landed up buying a feather rate for me. And then her other sister, Mary, who she lives with, also has now joined the online tribe and joins us whenever she's free. So this next picture of the, of the quilt is um, from Kathy Zoka, which is Franny's little sister. Um, <laughs> And she says, Darlene, when I first decided to make a quilt, I ended up having three going at once. Girl, don't I know that story. Um, all three have embroider blocks that I made on my embroidery machine. The bird one for my mom uh, was the first one bound. Lighthouse was the one for my dad who was in the Navy. And the flowered one was for my daughter-in-law and it took the longest to finish because we moved out of Bremerton while it was in process. And buying while selling took so long. I understand. All three free motion quilted. Um, been quilting ever since. Absolutely love it. Well, she oh, she's an overachiever. She didn't have one first quilt. She had three. <laughs> I love that blue border in that middle one. That's so pretty. Love, love, love. Very cool. You know what I like about this? I love that not only, so most of us have not met. Some of us have met, which I think is amazing, but a lot of us haven't met. But by you guys sharing your work with me and being allowing me to share it with, with, our, with our community, our online community, I feel like I know you better, which is kind of cool. It's making me a little teary-eyed, actually. It's very fun. Okay, <laughs> Reagan's like, don't start crying again. <laughs> I'm going to keep it together. It's okay. Keep it together. All right. Miss Leanne in Georgia. So funny story about how I met Leanne. Leanne called me to ask about um, some machines I had for sale. She was looking for a white machine. I talked her out of it. <laughs> and then she joined me for one of my uh, virtual classes. Um, so I have actually met Leanne on camera. And then... Um, then I got this like perfect white machine in rather recently and she had called about something else and I was telling her about the perfect white machine I had got and she bought it. So it's so funny. Leanne and I, we text back and forth pretty regularly. So this is Leanne's quilt. I love this. I love everything about this actually. Um, I love the blocks and the center pieced medallion in the middle. Um, <laughs> Because yes, you did, girl. Yes, you did talk me out of it. <laughs> so Leanne says, my first quilt was made at the request of my niece as she was going off to college. As an avid, avid knitter, I told her I wanted to make her a blanket to go to college. 
She stated a knitted blanket would be itchy because knitting equals wool equals itchy. And she'd rather have a quilt. Well, she knew what she wanted. I like her already. So what does any loving aunt do? She learns how to quilt. <laughs> My thought was to just make a 12 by 12 square and sew them all together. 12 by 12 squares and sew them together. I picked out all the fabric and then I stumbled on to the panel in the sale room. So I got out the graph paper and made this gem. The back is dotted Minky and she's now married and expecting her first child. That's amazing. Oh, how I can't wait to knit for the baby. <laughs> the baby can't say no thank you Leanne <laughs> oh my gosh that's so funny Leanne you have to make her a baby quilt <laughs> does she live in Georgia she doesn't need a, a knitted blanket in Georgia she needs a a quilt with a thin batting <laughs> That should have said, oh, okay. I can't wait to knit for the baby. <laughs> yes, or both, Leanne, definitely. These stories are so wonderful that they go with the quilts. I love it. Me too, Franny. I love this. For sure. All right, Ray. How we doing on, am I staying in time here? What's next? Oh, I see Mel. Do I? your list. Oh, oh, she wants me to read my list. Okay. So let's see. We have had, Le oh, so Lisa, 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 Lisa. Time for Lisa's quilt. I don't have a story. <laughs> um, I don't have a story uh, to go with this. Oh, Bridget says my first quilt was made out of calico fabrics before cameras. Maybe it was good that we didn't photograph the calico fabrics then. <laughs> That's so funny. So Lisa's quilt, let's go ahead and throw that up. So Lisa Meadows is, hi Judy P, thanks for joining us. Did it, nope, Odie, yours is coming up. Odie, where's yours? Did we not get Odie's? You didn't send me Odie's. Uh-oh, wait. Wait, what did I do? Odie, how did you send it to us? I, I don't remember. Did you text me? Oh, maybe you texted me. Hold on. Hold on. Let me just look really quick. I know, but I can't post it now. I know you can't post it now. Hang on one sec. Wait, Lisa, pause. Oh, there's Lisa's. Look at Lisa's. Oh, she said, my first one was made while I joined, waited to join the husband overseas in Germany and was staying with my parents with a four-year-old. Needed something to keep me busy, I'd say. Uh, and, and past the time I was six months pregnant and finished it in two and a half weeks. Holy moly. Very nice. It was used to bring home my son and two daughters from the hospital. How cool is that? Very cool. Okay, Odie, I'm looking real quick. Uh, so Odie sent it to me via messenger. Mama. Yes, I know. I'm going to just, I know but we could just put it on the story after. Hold on. I think I can get this. Odie. Oh, she did send three fit pictures. Dang it. Where is she? Where'd she go? Oh, there. Oh, okay. I got it. Let's see. Okay, so this is Odie's. Can you guys see that? That's Odie's one picture. Oh, it's so pretty. I love the, um, that's like a leopard print. Nice. And then here we go. Another one. And oh, darn it. You weren't actually on. Oh, anyway. hold on. We're going to try that again because now I'm on. So here's Odie's pictures. I love the animal print on that. That's fun. Okay, so Odie said, Here's my first quilt and mug rug I made in 2016. I started in 2016 watching the Crafty Gemini. I haven't heard of her. When I made the mug rug in 2016, I had no idea what a featherweight was so then vivian came home vivian is her featherweight one of her featherweights i should say i thought it would be a great cover and it fits her bed perfectly that's awesome 
Thank you, Odie, for, for reminding me. I don't want to miss anybody. All right, so we've got Lisa's. Uh, nope. Okay, we got it. Zebra. It is a zebra print. Nice, nice. All right, so we have Michelle, who is a viewer from Oklahoma. And did Michelle send a letter in? Nope. Okay, let me see. I think I got her up here. Nope. So Michelle just sent a picture. Let's take a look at her picture. I don't see it yet. There's a little lag in what I can see and what you guys can see. Oh, there it is. Not, I love those colors. Wow, that is so pretty. Is that called a jelly roll race, Michelle? I think that's called a jelly roll race. Very fun. And it looks like it's some batiks, and I love how the color, oh, did not send a letter. <laughs> She's only been quilting a year or so. Nice, girl. That looks fabulous. Very good. We all agree. Oh, Crafty Gemini was associated with Missouri Star for a while. Ah, 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 ah. Very cool. Michelle, thank you for sharing your beautiful work with us. All right, then we have Marsha Bridgewater, and Marsha did send a story in with hers. I'll read, is it Bodie, Marsha Bridgewater, Bodie? Um, she said, here is my first finished quilt made for my in-laws 40th anniversary in 1982. Nice. Each family member embroidered a block to um, represent their family or themselves. I used an applique te a template from a machine, from a machine I pieced and it was hand quilted by a coworker. Gosh, look at that, that is gorgeous. I have it back now due to their passing. <laughs> oh, she said also my first quilt class was at Margie's Country Store. That in Madison, Indiana, my favorite quilt shop in Madison, Indiana. She said that the applique template was from a quilt magazine. Very fun, very fun. Thank you for showing that. Wow, that that is a lot of work. Very, very, very cool. Oh, I did have a bit on Lisa's, shoot. It was for, okay, good. Oh, she said that it was the picture of her first quilt was from her youngest son crocheted one for my oldest. We did not know if it was a boy or a girl, so made it gender neutral. Hand applique with blocks and machine quilted and pieced almost 40 years ago. Wow, that is so cool. Okay, thanks for bearing with me with my technical issues tonight. I appreciate it, everybody. Marsha, really good job. Yeah, I did, Angel, I agree. It's very cool to get the whole family involved. Very cool. All right, everybody knows Mel and Joe. They're rather famous around this community out on Mississippi Gulf Coast. Um, she sent me this beautiful, I actually thought it was a one block wonder at first um, because of the color gradation, but I don't think it is. So let's read what, what Mel has to say. So Mel says in September of 2007, while on a holiday on the Gulf uh, Texas Gulf Coast, daughter Katie requested pillows. When the pillows were complete, she requested a quilt to match. I knew I liked your daughter. Keep you guys on your toes. She said, back to the quilt shop. Without a rotary cutter, ruler, or cutting mat, oh, the whole project was cut out with standard scissors. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. You must have been bored out of your gourd to think this was a good idea, Mel. Holy moly. It was when it was then machine quilted by a local quilter. We replaced the binding this year on July 4th and repairs and repaired many holes. It's been it's been loved a lot. Would, would you have it any other way? I, I love that. I actually love that when people when I give a quilt to someone and then they're like, there's a hole. It means it's being used. I just I. I I, she said, I'm so glad I embroidered the name and the date on it. I'm sure you are. So, <laughs> so I actually, um, I've had to rebind a couple quilts because they're so loved. They're now picnic quilts. So not, um, they're not, uh, you know, quilts for the couches, but they're quilts for the ground. And one of them in particular, I really had to like, go all the way around the edge all over again because the binding was totally coming off. Um, 
And uh, if, if I make anybody a quilt and they just hermetically seal it and put it into a closet, they never get anything else from me again. I want, I want the stuff that I make to be used and not just hung and adored. So <laughs> I think that's awesome that it had to be repaired. Very, very cool. All right, so now we have Missy. So Missy is my local um, quilting buddy. Uh, fan, I should say. We didn't meet before COVID. Uh, we met during COVID. Uh, she lives over on a, the other hill in Redmond, Washington. And she sent me like many quilts or many pictures of this quilt. I think it's fun. She wanted me to pick the best one. But I like the first one that came out. So Missy said, well, I dug out my first quilt, she said, made at a class at Pacific Fabrics in downtown Redmond in 1991. So 91, we would have lived here in 91, uh, but, but not for that long. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of fun that we've been running around the same hill for that many decades together. Bridget said she started quilting in 74. A lot has changed. I'd say a lot has changed since 1974, Bridget. <laughs> so um, Missy's quilt, look how cute that is. I love it. It looks fluffy too. Um, it's an Eleanor Burns pattern. Uh, she said double poly batting and a muslin back. She needs a good wash. <laughs> That's exactly what I said when I pulled out my first one. I'm like, oh, this smells funny. I need to wash it. I need to wash it. Okay. So <laughs> this next one is Nancy's in Lake Stevens. And this made my whole week. So I'm going to have Ray throw up the picture. Uh, is it up yet? Okay, y'all, I said y'all. We're going to just let me pass as a Southerner, right? Friends, this is my quilt design. My quilt design. Nancy's first quilt was my quilt design. Oh, that makes me smile. It makes my heart happy. This was the Arizona Sky Quilt As You Go that we did last year during covid um, uh, it was a, an attempt to, to have some consistent programming on the shows. And I, I literally pulled it out one night. It was mostly designed. I designed it while we lived in Arizona. Uh, and it was literally like not done yet. And we started it the next day and I was kind of made it up as I went. And, um, Nancy says, good morning, Darlene. My first quilt was the Arizona quilt I did with you in 2020. Many mistakes, but I enjoyed learning with you, picking out fabrics from my stash and learning how to do some free motion quilting on my Anna Irene, which is her 1947 featherweight. Thank you for helping me accomplish something I had never done before. Ah, smile, smile, smile. Nancy, you made my week. Thank you so much for sending me that picture. I am so thrilled that you were thrilled. I love the colors you chose too. I mean, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Amazing, that's a great story. All right, what is next? Oh, sorry. Next is, we're gonna do Sandy, is it to mess you up to get you out of order? Can we just do Polly? So the next, um, the next quilt that we have to show is, was actually made by my mom. So um, my mom is around this community quite a bit. Her name is Pauline and she lives in Texas. And she, um, so she was the daughter of, um, of my grandmother that is really responsible for all of my sewing technique. Um, she, uh, did mom send a story? Nope. No, okay. So mom um, was not a sewer, you guys. Because why did she need to be a sewer if her mom was a phenomenal seamstress? So my mom didn't sew. I was the one that, my mother-in-law was the one that got me to quilt. And then I quickly had both of my sisters quilting. And then when mom retired a few years ago, we, well, we, as in the sisters and I, got her kind of set up for quilting, but she didn't really take to it as much as we would have hoped she would have. So this is her first quilt. It hangs in their house. Um, I think I actually quilted it for her, but she made the top 
and uh, the colors are very pretty. It's very bright, and they live in Texas, so that's kind of fun. <laughs> Mom, Mom just said, just remembered this isn't my first quilt. I think it was one of the first ones. I do. Isn't that pretty? I love that. All right, what do we have? I think Sandy Martin is last, but certainly not least, on my on my agenda tonight. Um, okay, so this is Sandy Martin's um, first quilt. Sandy is a is a buddy down in um, Pleasanton, California. We bonded over Labradors and quilting. <laughs> so Sandy looks like she did a memory quilt. Wow, that is beautiful. She said, this is my first quilt. I decided that a quilt would be perfect, would be the perfect 50th wedding anniversary gift for my parents. I, it was 18 years ago and I made a king size. <gasps> Sandy Martin, are you crazy? You made a king size quilt as your first quilt? Start smaller, start smaller. Um, what was I thinking, she said. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I kind of made up the pattern. I included pictures of my parents and a, and a young family as well as, oh, I'm sorry, as well as their invitation. Very cool. I had each of the family members trace their hands on fabric and write a note to my folks, and then I applicate them on the square. Thanks, he thank heavens for my local quilt store. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Julia, hello. Are you just joining us? I already showed everybody your quilt. Yeah, Sandy, this is super awesome. Good job. Yeah, good job. Um, so we have um, Bryce is on. She says, finally got to join you live. It's been a busy summer. Thanks for always showing up and even <laughs> when we show up late. It would be bad if I showed up late to my own show. <laughs> So that is all of the pictures that I had sent in. Look at how many of stories and pictures I had. Good job, you guys. Um, I want to just take a minute to, again, as Lisa said, that King Size was my second quilt, um, to, thank, uh, to thank Mel for this fabulous idea to do a, a showcase of our very first quilts. Um, I, I, uh, I obviously am in very good company here, uh, which I think is kind of amazing. Um, I think like-minded people kind of tend to gravitate towards each other. And um, I think it's really cool that you guys were able to join me and share all of this, these special stories and these special pictures with everybody. So, <clears throat> you guys are so cute. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Monday is going to be back to our regular schedule I guess um thanks guys uh everybody's saying how much fun they had that's awesome uh so Monday's gonna be back to my regular programming uh we're gonna do an ask the doctor if you guys have any questions on um quilting or or quilting with the featherweight feel free to email to the info at featherweightdoctor.com email address <laughs> yes Debbie Debbie Sinclair, wait a second. She says, great job, ladies and gents. Maybe one day I will get to add one to the beginner's list. You haven't made a quilt yet? What are you waiting for? <laughs> um, and then Wednesday is going to be, um, we're, gonna, we're continuing on with our featherweight friends, nope, featherweight stories content. Um, <laughs> did you love that? Did you love that comment, <laughs> Lisa? <laughs> My producer did a great job. She really did. <laughs> Odie says, I have to send you my first large quilt. It was my hubby's, and it was before I knew how to piece a back to not be three yards so long. <laughs> Uh, and then, so, and so that'll be Wednesday with Franny Baldwin. So everybody tune into that four o'clock Pacific on YouTube and Facebook. And then Friday is going to be back to the sip and sew. I have to get some, some quilts done. Becky, um, my buddy in Kennedale, Texas says, love the virtual quilt show. They were all beautiful. I didn't get mine in. Maybe next time. For sure. For sure. Julia said I had to pick up 
that same grandson for the weekend. Can I? Yes, um, Julia, if you um, go back you can, to the Featherweight Doctor after I'm off air, you can watch it from the beginning. And you can see I posted the picture with your grandson on the quilt. He's a cute little guy in the picture. I realize he's huge now. <laughs> yes, we for sure were going to do another virtual quilt show. Maybe we'll do like current projects instead of, you know, first projects. Um, it's, uh, I think it was really cool though to see everybody's, because you know how quilting has really changed and modernized, not only in the equipment you, we use, but the types of colors and fabrics that we use. So it's kind of, it was kind of fun to take that little walk down memory lane. And, but maybe we'll do like, uh, I don't know, we'll have a theme to our next one also. I'll have to think about that. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to pop off and start thinking about dinner. <laughs> Probably should go to the store. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Um, this is Darlene with Featherweight Doctor. Uh, I guess I will look forward to seeing you on Monday. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon.